run at Queen Mary University of London down in Mile End. And so uh, we're not a company yet. Uh, we're a university research lab, call ourselves the Augmented Instruments Lab, which is a part of a bigger group called the Center for Digital Music, which does all manner of things related to music and technology at Queen Mary. Um, there's several other Queen Mary people here, several other people who are uh, specifically part of the Bella development. So there's Julio and Chris and Robbie back there in the corner, and then a few other Queen Mary people around. So, well, um, thank you all for turning up. Um, and uh, yeah, so we did this. So we did this Kickstarter very recently, but I'll come back to that. Um, and uh, so you know, we're uh, basically we're trying to build a community for uh, this new platform that we have created called Bella, which is this looks like a mini circuit boards that you may have seen before. Uh, so what's all this about? Uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make a really uh, you know, high performance, convenient, easy to use platform for interactive systems, and specifically interactive audio systems. Things like uh, the kind of thing that would be the guts of a digital musical instrument, let's say, you know, that does all of the processing of sensor data, generating sound, and so it's the sort of thing you can put inside a box and you know, play it as an electronic instrument. Um, and so the board is really designed from the ground up for that. And I'll come back to why. But um, in that context, it's worth talking a little bit about what's out there right now. So you know, some of you will know this already. Maybe some haven't seen these things before. Um, there's a board called Arduino. Um, Arduino is uh, probably the most well-known of the kind of electronic maker platforms that's out there. Um, it's a really convenient little microcontroller board, which is uh, basically you can pro you know you you plug it into your computer, you program it up with your code to you know blink some lights and read some sensors and turn some motors on that kind of thing, and then you unplug it from the computer, you put it in the project, and it just runs itself for you know uh, without you know needing any sort of connection to the wider world. Um, you can do things like connect Arduinos to computers and use it to process it. So you get the sensor data from the Arduino, you send it over to your computer, and you do other sorts of stuff with that. But um, they're, it's an amazing tool, and it's an amazing tool not just for the technical reasons, but because they've built this incredible community of people who do different projects, share all of their stuff. It's all open source. There's tons of online examples and documentation. It's really, really a great platform. But if you want to do audio stuff, as we do, it's just not powerful enough. Just you know, it's really. I mean, you can do a little bit, but you really have to push it to get uh, to get decent quality audio out of it. Um, another one that you have probably seen is the Raspberry Pi. Uh, the Raspberry Pi, I would describe it as a single board computer. So the Arduino is basically it's a special function thing. You program it with your code. When you plug it in, then it runs only your code for all time. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is really a Linux computer. It runs a complete operating system. Just, uh, and it's therefore capable of a lot more than the Arduino, but it's not very convenient for these kind of embedded projects where you just want it to run your code and do it really fast and really efficiently. And it turns out that because of the way it's designed and because of the Linux operating system it runs, you have this problem with latency with your audio, which is the idea that when you, uh, when you do an action, there's a delay between before you hear the sound that comes out. And it's actually very hard to get that number very low. And so Raspberry Pi is not perfect for what we're looking for. And then um, the kind of third option that people use for these sort of interactive audio things is that you take an Arduino to read your sensors, and then you just have a cable, like a USB cable or maybe a Bluetooth link or something, and it goes to your laptop, and your laptop does all the hard computation and does the audio generation. But this has a whole bunch of problems all of its own, um, having to do with latency, having to do with the communication link. And uh, suffice it to say that none of these is a really great solution for making self-contained musical instruments. So we're, we're going to try something a little bit different. Um, so this is Bella, um, and what it is is uh, just to nerd out about this a little bit. Uh, we've got a BeagleBone Black. It's a single board computer. It's like it's like a Raspberry Pi in terms of capabilities, but we've also built this extra custom hardware board that goes on the top, and that gives you all your audio inputs and outputs. It gives you your sensor inputs, your other you know other outputs that you can control lights and motors and that kind of stuff. So it's all on, just on this little sort of stack of two boards. And then what happens here is we're going to run a special hardware and software environment that gives you really great performance. So um, here's our little kind of marketing spiel. Connected, embedded, fast, and easy to get started. Um, there you go. Yes, thank you. Any questions? Um, the, uh, the idea here is that we're aiming to have all the advantages of essentially a, a single board computer. You know, the fact that you can use networking and storage and USB and all this other sort of stuff. 
but also have all the efficiency and all of the high performance that you would expect to get out of a microcontroller board, which is the sort of thing that's dedicated to one purpose only. Um, do it in a way that you can put it inside of a project without needing to tie it to a laptop, and then you know, and then build a set of tools around it that makes it really easy for people to make their projects. So um, here's what's on the board. It gives you the things that you would want to make interactive audio. It gives you audio in and out, of course. Uh, it gives you uh, analog inputs and outputs that you can use for things like sensors, uh, digital inputs and outputs, and some little speaker amplifiers just on the board so you can run some, you know, just some, uh, some speakers inside the box. Just a convenient set of tools. Um, uh, okay, that's a lot of stuff. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna really get into this except to really highlight uh, the, the top bit of it, which is that this latency issue, the, the delay between your action and your sound, is ridiculously low compared to anything else you're going to find out there. I mean, within one millisecond of, you know, of your action, you hear the sound. Now, to, to, to compare, like, you know, if I, if I knock on this table here, the latency from the sound to travel from here to my ear is probably two to three milliseconds, so it's extremely fast. And that's not something you can do with, uh, with a laptop. And it's uh, basically it's designed in such a way that you get really good alignment between your audio and your sensors, and that the performance is really robust. You know, it's not, when you load it down, it doesn't start to get you know clunky and you know, start dropping frames and making you know glitchy noises. It, it is you know the kind of thing that you could count on in a sort of professional context. Um, yeah, here's here's why basically um, all the kind of other stuff that the computer runs can you know basically go through the sort of normal Linux process. Uh, whereas your audio code gets a sort of fast track straight to the hardware, and that's why we can get better performance. We can talk about that later on if you're interested. Um, but let's talk about the, the easy to get started bit. The, the idea here is that you get the board, you plug it into your computer by USB, like you would with an Arduino when you want to program it, and you can actually just call up in your web browser a, a server that's running on the board that gives you a complete development environment. All the code is built on the board. Uh, you know, it means you don't need any special tools to be installed. You don't need any special compilers. It's just, you know, if you have a web browser, you don't even need an internet connection because the thing is running on the board. It's just, you know, call it out, write the code, and then you can, you know, then you can run it from there. Um, you have, we have a browser-based oscilloscope, which is, a, you know, basically a visualization of the signals that go in, go in and out. I mean, you can spend thousands of for a really nice oscilloscope that goes on your electronics workbench, but here it's just right inside the browser, and you can visualize your stuff, which makes it really easy to develop and debug. Um, and if that if that wasn't uh, enough of a useful way of doing things, we have a few other options. Um, you know, if you want to kind of go the uh, the low level route, there's a set of scripts that you can use, so you can use your favorite editor and then still build all the code on the board. But then you can also do stuff like uh, use graphical programming languages like Pure Data or PD for short, which is really popular in the community. Uh, maybe uh, maybe some people have used MaxMSP, which is a similar kind of language. They're, they're basically ways of creating uh, audio systems involving kind of connecting little boxes with virtual wires rather than writing a lot of text. Um, then there's some other stuff that, one thing that's really been really exciting about doing this project is that the community is already starting to pitch in and develop support for their own things. So the Faust uh, DSP language is, is quite popular in a certain segment of the community, and they've added support for Bella. Uh, Pio is a, is a relatively new framework using the Python language for doing audio, and they've added support for Bella. And we're working with uh, a few people, including some people at the Stein Center in Amsterdam to support Super Collider, which is a really, really great computer music language. Um, so oh, that's probably basically enough about what it is. Um, this is where we're at. We did a Kickstarter campaign uh, over the month of March. It finished. Um, yeah, it was actually it was actually quite successful. We we went in asking for five thousand pounds and came out just short of uh, fifty five thousand. So there was a nice uh, nice response there. Uh, Kickstarter loves maker platforms. It's it's. Uh, it's great, but I mean, it's it's really exciting because now there's like 500 or so people who are going to have this, and can, you know, we can really start to build a community of, to share ideas. Um, so we're in the stage now where we're building all of the stuff that was ordered on Kickstarter and we'll be shipping it next month. At which point we'll uh, sort of try to open it up to the general post Kickstarter world. I'll stop there. Um, so this is where you can find out more information. Um, if this is the sort of thing you're interested in, you can sign up for our announcement mailing list, which is. Extremely low traffic. It's like you know a couple announcements when specific interesting things happen, um, and we'll have some demos around here. We've got a few different ones. Uh, 
And I think rather than monopolize the floor with the demos, maybe we'll just have them here. So uh, those guys in the back have some demos. Julio's got a demo here. 